cool. Hey guys, Devin here with Make Anything. Now, if you've seen my 3D printing hangboard video, you might recall my big dream of one day building a rock climb with all the holds being 3D printed. It would just be so cool in my opinion, and you'd be able to have all kinds of really crazy shapes, and it's something that I've really wanted to do. So considering my other projects, you might think, well, that's easy enough. 3D printing some kind of blobby forms that you stick a screw through and stick to a wall can't be too difficult. But the main problem is actually not the modeling, but the material. Traditionally, most climbing holds in gyms are made using polyurethane plastic. And they use polyurethane because it's extremely durable and very rigid, so it can withstand all that abuse of people climbing all over it for days on end, and even the extreme force of screwing it really tightly into the wall so it doesn't spin around while you're climbing. Polyurethane is what's known as a thermosetting plastic. Unlike pretty much every plastic I will use in a 3D printer, thermosets do not melt when they have heat applied to them. So usually climbing holds are first modeled out of foam, then a silicone mold is created, and two chemicals are mixed in that mold, which react to create polyurethane. So it wouldn't be too much of a leap to just have a 3D printed model of the climbing hold, make a mold of that, and then create a polyurethane cast of the 3D print. But I wanna raise the bar, I wanna take it to a new level and have the 3D print itself be what people are climbing on the wall. Is it possible? Well today, I hope to find out because we're gonna be using some special materials that might help with this challenge. But before we test out those materials, we have to first have some cool climbing holds to 3D print. And I decided to design them once again in virtual reality. I know that's what the last video was about, but it's really perfect for making rock climbing holds because I wanna create something bumpy, grippy, textured, and visually interesting. VR is probably the easier way to do that for me. So I'm gonna throw on my HTC Vive headset, open up Gravity Sketch, and we're gonna go in there and make something cool. Let's try it out. All right, so here we are in Gravity Sketch. And the first thing I wanna do is use this surface tool to create the bottom surface of my climbing hold. So I'm gonna create this kind of lima bean shaped surface. Those bean shapes are kind of common in climbing holds. And then I'm just gonna use a round brush and scale this down so that I can do some large filling strokes and kind of get some mass to this piece. And you know, it's really quick. I'm not going for anything specific, just trying to create something organic, but still ideal for using in a rock climbing gym. So it's gotta be something you could grab onto or at least get a foot onto. So I'll use the diamond brush to make the shape a little more grippy, add some texture, add some cool aesthetic feel to it. Yeah, being in California, this design is kind of inspired by those sea mussels that attach themselves all over the rocks at the tide pools by the beach here. We'll have these giant rocks that get washed over by the ocean and they're just covered in these shells. Pretty uh, sharp on the feet, but maybe they'll make a good grip for a climbing hold. So I'm just gonna keep repeating that shape over and over again to build up this texture and just have it kind of growing over sections of the hold. But I don't wanna cover the entire thing with this shape, so I'll leave some of that underlying softness and combine it with these sharper shapes. All right, that looks good for a first test. I'm gonna go ahead and save that out. But I need to create one more part, and that is the screw hole for the screw to hold the hold to the wall. <laughs> Weird sentence. A screw hole to hold the hold. Anyways, so I actually just got measurements online for the screws that are used on climbing holds, and I've just plugged those in to this rotation that I'm gonna use to create that hole. And I'll just tell you right now, these measurements I used were a little bit too tight of a tolerance, so when I did print them out the first time, they were very tight fit. So it would be better to kind of increase all these values by two to 3% and that'll get a better hole. And that's actually what I ended up doing, scaling up the entire bolt 2% just to make it fit better. 
But anyways, let's just pretend I did that right there. And now back in Mesh Mixer, we have that hold I designed. And I'm gonna use close cracks, and then I'm gonna do make solid. You could technically just go straight to making it solid, but close cracks kind of helps everything run a little quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and mess with these settings a bit. And you can just keep doing that until you have a result that looks good. And then you'll go ahead and accept it and have a solid part. After that, I'm gonna use the plane cut feature to cut the bottom of the part, make it nice and flat so we can print that straight up without supports. And before we put that screw hole in, we wanna make sure this is correctly scaled. This is just the file as I brought it in from Gravity Sketch, and it doesn't really have any sense of scale right now. So first I'll just align it to the ground. So Mesh Mixer has a little align function that lets you do that pretty easily. Rotate that and kind of put it into place, make it look nice and neat. And then I can go ahead and select the transform feature. And as you can see in the menu, it shows you the measurements. And this thing is less than a millimeter wide in its largest dimension. So we know that's not right. So I'll just go ahead and change that largest dimension, which is the width of the part. And I reckon that's about 90 millimeters at its widest point. So I'll just go ahead and change that size Z to 90 millimeters and everything else will automatically scale with it. So now I gotta zoom out a whole bunch since this part is much bigger. I think I'm inside of it right now. Keep zooming out. There we go. And there it is. So yeah, Gravity Sketch definitely makes really tiny parts to begin with. So if you're printing something out, more than likely you're gonna wanna scale it first. All right, so now that it's the correct size, we can bring in the bolt, which I made in SolidWorks, so we know that is the correct size. And then I'm just gonna rotate that into position and use the transform tool to just move it and sink the screw down into the part. So once I have that positioned, I'll drop it down in the Z direction and make sure that the top part is deep enough into the print, that way the screw won't be sticking out. So if you're confused as to why I have this solid cylinder running through my part, it's because I'm actually gonna be subtracting this from the hold. And that is called a Boolean difference. However, before we do that, we wanna select this bolt and use the remesh feature to give it more triangles. I found the easiest way to do this was to set the remesh mode to target edge length and then just manually decrease the edge length until that hole looks like a pretty regular shape. And now you can see it's got all these triangles, which will allow the Boolean difference to work the way it's meant to. So now I just wanna select both those parts here in the object browser, first the hold and then the bolt hole, and then I'll click Boolean difference. As you can see, it goes ahead and subtracts that bolt from the hold. And now I have the perfect cavity that I need to put a screw in there. Now it does a pretty sharp cut, so it's got some edges there that I don't quite want to print that rough. So I'm going to use Make Solid again, and I'm going to increase this setting for minimum thickness. And that's going to prevent really pointy or tiny parts that wouldn't print so well. Alright, that looks pretty good. There are some weird little nubbins over here, but I can just use the select tools to kind of grab those faces and delete them which will leave a hole, but then I can use the inspector tool to automatically fill those holes. That's something I'd rather not do. I would have preferred to just model it better in Gravity Sketch to begin with. But anyways, it's okay for this early test print. All right, that looks good. So it's time to print this thing. And this is where we do some special stuff because I'm gonna be using a one millimeter nozzle instead of my standard 0.4 millimeters. And this material that I'm using is a carbon fiber composite PLA from Protopasta, which should add some rigidity and strength to the part. So here you can see the first layer printing out, nice and slow, which is what you wanna do when you have a nozzle size that big. And you can see that really thick border, that's because I have five perimeters, one millimeter thick each, and then I've got about a 50% infill for the rest of the part. I didn't print completely solid here because I didn't have too much carbon fiber material to begin with, and I figured this is pretty darn sturdy for an initial test. I mean, it definitely weighs a lot more than your regular plastic part. And honestly, this feels like the perfect material for a climbing hold. It's dry and grippy, unlike PLA, which can feel kind of slippery. 
check out these macro shots and you can see it printed really clean and that's what we need for a strong part. However, as strong as this material is, it's also rather brittle, so it does snap pretty easily. So I'm gonna print the same exact part, but using this Tallman T-Glaze filament, which is a lot more flexible and also pretty darn tough. So let's see how that turns out. Unfortunately, unlike the carbon fiber, this material shrinks a lot, so I wasn't able to get it to stay down on the build plate. Even with super gluing it down, it warped up quite a bit. It would have been a big help to print with a heated build plate, but I didn't have one at the time. I decided to try and fix this by running over the part for a few minutes with a heat gun until it was pliable enough for me to bend it back into place. At this point, I was really excited with how these holds were coming out, so I decided to print a slightly larger piece. So this is another hold that I also designed in Gravity Sketch. And as you can see, I went with a more bubbly look, but it's also got this kind of handle so that it should be easier to grip. Some of the layers weren't perfect, but overall, it also looked really good. So here is my biggest hold yet. So big, in fact, that I ran out of the carbon fiber material pretty early on into the print, so I just went ahead and swapped that out with some of this thermochromatic PLA. This PLA also printed a bit stringy, so I decided to use the heat gun again to melt away those strings, and it also demonstrates the color changing effect of the plastic. Pretty cool. These are the four holds that I printed out, and at this point I was ready to bring them to my local climbing gym and give them a shot. So here we are at my favorite climbing gym, the factory. I mean, they're letting me use my holds on their climbing wall, so that's how you know they're cool. And this is when I realized just how tightly they have to screw these holds into the wall. I was definitely sweating while this was being screwed in. Even being screwed in so tightly, the hold still did slip a bit, so we tightened it some more and eventually got it to hold into place. The walls at this gym aren't too textured, and the back of my hold is also completely slick, so that might be something I have to change. Removing the hold, you can see there's some warping that happened at the bottom here near the hole, but overall it stayed together and functioned pretty well. So we decided to try out my giant piece, and we also screwed in that little foothold that I printed in T-Glaze. Once we got them really tight, I tried them out, and they held in place. I had my sister try it out as well, since she's maybe, kind of, maybe a little bit better at climbing than me. You can see her jumping on the edge there to make sure it doesn't spin and this part just held up perfectly. The smallest carbon fiber print, on the other hand, didn't fare so well. You can see the moment here where it just pops, and that was the point of failure. These results were kind of the opposite of what I expected. I thought the small holds would hold up a lot better, and the big one might break. But, as you can see, that wasn't the case. The biggest hold held up the best. The T-Glaze also held up perfectly, it's just a little too slippery. You might say these smaller holds had some rather catastrophic failures, but it seems like the layers just separated past themselves. The manner in which this piece failed makes me think that if I printed everything with a solid infill and fewer perimeter layers, I would actually have better results. So that'll probably be my next step for these small ones. I also have to be careful how I design the holds, because some of these small spiky parts could just chip off if I push them a little too hard. And in a climbing gym, anything that can break off, will break off. So we do have mixed results. Of course it would be awesome if everything just worked right away, but mixed results are probably the next best thing we could have for the sake of progress, because we're figuring out what works and what doesn't, and we're getting closer and closer to the ultimate solution. Naturally, I'm going to be documenting the continuation of this journey here on my channel, 
and I hope you guys will be there to follow along. But that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.